So with this video, we will be looking at and examining the false doctrine of provisionism. And this is a relatively new doctrine and one that I believe was coined by false teacher Leighton Flowers. Now, I could be wrong about that, but I do believe Leighton was one of the first to openly write about and promote provisionism. So what is provisionism? Well, it's basically a view that upholds all the points that make up Arminianism, with a few differing views on eternal security and justification. Now, a provisionist would probably tell you that they believe the word of God and they take it as truth, but they don't. Okay, And this is why men like Leighton Flowers constantly are seeking to create new doctrines to change biblical truth to fit their own heretical agenda. That's the point with this. Okay, This is why they do that. Now, on this channel, we should all be in agreement that Arminianism is false, because it is. But much like the doctrines of grace in regards to the tulip, provisionism also has an acrostic, and it's called provide, the seven points of provide. And this is what they are. Point one, people sin. Point two, responsible. Point three, open door. Point four, vicarious atonement. Point five, illum illuminating grace. Point six, destroy. Point seven, eternal security. Now, out of these seven points, three of the points are just flat out unbiblical. And those three points are, Point two, responsible. Point five, illuminating grace instead of irresistible grace. And the illuminating concept is widely held by the Catholic Church. And then we have point six, which is destroyed. But even with the remaining points that are biblical, if you read into their interpretations of those points, they even take those points out of context. OK, so really the whole thing is a mess. And it's nothing more than a means by which wicked sinners can change the word of God to fit their own desires and agendas. That's why they do these things. Now, I'm not saying that. There aren't and there won't be uh, men of God who come out with new doctrines that are biblical. But the latent flowers here with provisionism, it's all wrong. And it has an agenda. Down a little further. We need proclaimers of God's word. We need this priest. We need this Ezra. This is what we need now. And I'm going to go on a bit. If this is a big subject, but I'm going to try to move fast. The command to make disciples. This is from a, a work I'm working on. The command to make disciples through teaching proves that Christianity is a truth religion and the Great Commission is a doctrinal endeavor. However, one glance at world missions today will demonstrate that doctrine is not a high priority. And for this reason, our missionary activity has become something of a contradiction, even an absurdity. Let me give you a few of the most glaring examples, and I've written these down. First, it has become popular opinion that Christians should lay aside their doctrine and unite around their common faith in Christ. Sounds good. However, the harsh reality is that there are many versions of Christ being proclaimed on the earth today by those who claim to be his followers. How can we distinguish the true Christ from the multitude of false Christ except through a careful study of the scriptures and a faithful application of its doctrine? Are we to preach a Christ to the nations who is so general or vague that we fill the world and the church with countless contradictory opinions regarding his person and work? Unity cannot logically be founded upon our common confession of an undefined Christ and our contrary and contradictory opinions of him. Second, it is often stated that Christians should lay aside their theology and unite around the common cause of the Great Commission. However, the Great Commission is primarily a theological endeavor. To lay aside theology in order to advance a theological endeavor is logical suicide and self-destructive. It is absurd to think that the Great Commission can be the thread that binds together individuals who differ in major tenets of doctrine. Unity must be based upon a common view of who Christ is and what he taught. Third, it has become a common maxim that Christians should concern themselves with the major doctrines of the faith and not sweat the small stuff. The famous quotation attributed to Augustine reflects this wisdom. In essentials, unity. In doubtful matters, liberty. In all things, charity. The statement is well-founded and well-worded. However, there are some underlying and inherent dangers in such an opinion. One of the most serious has to do with the current trend in Christianity, which increasingly, listen to me, increasingly depreciates the importance of absolutes. As this trend continues, Christians relegate more and more doctrine to the small stuff category. 
Doctrines that were previously held to be absolute essentials are no longer considered worthy of arguing about. If someone says something twisted and vulgar about your wife and you tell me it's not worth arguing about, what kind of man does that make you? <laughs> 